Hi guys, I'm going to try to do an all-in-one knitting machine video. Mine happens to be a 48 pin, but the concept is the same for all of these circular machines. And I am going to try and do all the steps that you need to do. Starting with, I don't actually know what this is called. Um, it's like a, it's just how you get the yarn on. You have to put it under a hook and then you skip every other hook. This is how you get the yarn on in a way that is not too tight and allows the yarn to get not live. If you're new to knitting like me, I only crocheted before this so every time you crochet you just have one loop. Everything else is stuck together but with knitting the whole bottom needs to be stuck together otherwise it's all live stitches which really means that they can come apart and then you're dead because your project is all ruined. So once you get to the beginning where you were, so I put it in there and then there's a little tension guide at the bottom I put it in there and then you kind of hold this tail so that it doesn't get lost because it's just loose and around you go. I have my little ball. This I'm just going to use as waste yarn which means it's not really part of my project. But because I want to make a flat end at the bottom, uh, I just put this waste yarn on. And when I switch to my real yarn at the end, when I sew it all up together, this yarn just comes off. It's not, it's not going to be kept. So you do a couple rounds. I just have, I'll just use this one up. I think it gets to me to about seven rows. So this had seven, and then I'll just get to that white one again. There it is. So that's now to change colors in your project and when you're doing waste yarn to your project yarn, just put that one down. Here's my next one. Oh, that's not gonna work. Don't want those. Here we go. I just dropped mine on the floor. My table is, uh, you can see it's a very messy table. It's my art table. That's where I do all my fun stuff. So I drop it to the floor. Make sure it's in the guide. If you don't get it in this part, it will miss your stitches. So you need to make sure it's in that part. Because I'm not going to need to use this tail for sewing, I don't need it to be that long. So that's a good enough there. And then I put it in my little guide at the bottom. And then I hold these just to pretend like they are one piece of string for now. And then I'm going to tie them together to keep them tight so that when I go round and round it doesn't come apart. But when we are done the project, we'll be taking that apart anyway. So you don't need to do too many knots because you want to be able to take it apart. And then I redo my stitch because I want to know how many rows is my actual project yarn. And today I was just going to be making um, a pretend panel, really. I'm not planning to do much with this. I just want to show you how it works. So I'm just going to go around for a little while. If you're done, you can cut it, but I'm not really doing anything with this yarn. So I'm just going to put it in and I want to actually put waste yarn on this side as well because I want both ends to be flat. So here I am taking my waste yarn again. You could put it here if you really want it to be specific because I had used that as my first one before. But I don't know if that makes a whole lot of difference. Technically they do all line up, but I think that one stitch either side, it just makes the difference when you're sewing it up. This is how you'll finish it, which we'll get to. But I'll just hold it. That's how we make the change. If I wanted this part of my project right here when I'm doing these, I would tie it really, really tight. So I mean this direction tight, give it some good tugs and also, multiple knots so that your knot doesn't come off. Make it really tight. Since it's going to be waste yarn, it doesn't really matter this time. And we'll just do a couple rows again with the waste yarn. And that just allows it so that when you take it off the machine, you don't want your waste yarn to unravel before you're ready, but you're actually leaving all of those stitches open. They're all still live. So you need enough rows that if one pops off, it's not gonna ruin your project. You can see this is thicker yarn, but I still haven't had any drop stitches and I just go till it runs out because it's not really part of the project. 
To get it off of the machine when you're using the waste yarn, um, pay attention here to where you started. I've got my tail. I'm going around. Now there's literally one loop. Once I've done this round here, there's only one loop on all of these things. They can just pop off, which is what we want, but you have to be careful that you don't do it before you're ready. So we're just gonna go, we're just gonna keep going and it's all popping off, which normally you'd be like, ah, my project. But we actually want it to just pop off because we're gonna, we're done with it, see? So now if you had done like 100 rows or whatever, you would have a nice panel because that's what I kind of want to show you is how to, how to make the flat end and how to join these panels. I have my two panels. They're very short panels. Waste yarn, my project, ending with waste yarn. Again here, waste, project, waste. And now I'm just going to show you what to do to get that flat seam. This is where we joined it, so that is a good place for this to end. We're going to go folding it in half until we get back to the beginning. And because gray is the project yarn, that's the stuff I want to save, that's the loops that I want to go under. If you can see, when you're looking at, it's very, if you use two different colored yarn, it's easy to see which row is the one I want to save, right? So you fold it in half. And you pick up one of these loops. I'm using a four and a half millimeter for this part. I haven't decided what the best size is, but that one feels comfortable to me. So I'm going in a loop and then I'm just going to pick up the other loop and pull it through. It's like slip stitching if you're familiar with crochet. And then I have to find the next loop from the top and then the bottom. We go top, bottom, top, bottom and just slip stitch them all into each other. There's no extra yarn used right now. You just go top, bottom, top, bottom. And all of these live loops are now getting secured within themselves. And until you get to the end, you'll need to secure the last one. But this just goes back and forth. And they do come apart if you let go, but they're actually quite stuck. So if your hook falls down, they're not just going to fall apart on you. And if you make a mistake, it can take a little bit of work to get them apart, but it is doable. And that is how you make that nice seam across the top when you want to do something flat. So the two blankets, they would have a flat seam. A scarf could use a flat seam. Um, I'm sure there are other uses for a flat seam. I saw someone making a cloth with like, they used cotton yarn, but it has to be sort of stretchy. I haven't tried that yet. I just all, all of this is acrylic, which has a lot of stretch, which is apparently good for the machine to use because machines are not humans and they cannot stretch their hands. They have to stretch the yarn. So we're just going up, down, up, down, catching all those loops. Headbands, I think headbands, if you've done a headband, it would have a flat loop. I've done headbands and hats and blankets. And I did a balaclava thing. I think that's the word. That one was difficult. I do not have tutorial on the, the stitches that are open. That one was pretty fun to learn, but it didn't do good. So I'm going to have to do that project again. Didn't do good. Great grammar, Ashley. Don't listen to my grammar, okay? <laughs> this is where our knot was, so that we're just going to ignore it for a second. Keep going up and down. Make sure you don't miss the last one or your loops will be live and it will unravel. So now that we're at the end, this loop we can untie. So this is the loop. Um, I should cut it. I was being lazy, I didn't want to cut my yarn, but I should cut it for the video. So, let me grab my scissors. I got these fancy little pretty bird things. Cute, right? Okay, yarn, you can be nothing. It's not like I don't have enough yarn to use it on a video, I don't know. You do that too, where it's like, it's not the perfect project, so I don't really want to use it. <laughs> so this is now in there, and I need to make it a knot. And you can, I'm sure you have your favorite knot method. I 
just make a regular knot. I don't, I'm sure it has a name. It probably does have a name, right? They have names for all the knots. I just make a knot and pull it down. So now this is a knot going to unravel. You do have to still take your waste yarn off. Let me set that down. It just comes off and you don't want to do like 30 rows because it would be hard to unravel, but I just did however much it was yarn in this little bundle. When you get to this stage, it kind of, it pulls through here. You can see all the little loops, they, they come apart, but you have to pull on them. It's kind of fun. I like it. Blop, 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 blop. Blop, 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 blop. Oh yeah, that's the waste yarn. We're done with you. I will re-ravel it and use it again because I have so much yarn that I keep it. <laughs> this, you can just pull it in because you're, I guess it could wiggle out depending on what you're using this for. You might want to weave it in a few different times. Some people use fabric glue to really tack it down. I just pull it in. It's now, it's inside. That's all. And now you have a nice flat seam. So you can then use it for your headbands or whatever. We have to do it on the other side as well, but here is where you really want to line them up. All of these rows will be straight. So if this is our corner row, you can follow it all the way down and know that that is the one that needs to be straight with this side, okay? And when I did my tube blanket, I just left these live until the very end because I also wasn't sure if my tubes were gonna match. There is a difference when you're taking off the waste yarn if you're using the top or the bottom when you were doing the machine, right? So this is actually, the blue was what I started with. So when it tries to come off, it actually, it doesn't just pull off nicely like that one did. That was actually the, that was the last waste yarn I had used. This is the first waste yarn. So I wanted to show you when you're pulling on your tail, it starts to just cinch it together, which would be great if you were making a hat <laughs> and you wanted that cinched look, that's actually what you do for a hat, right? You just pull it. But if you want to take it apart, you're going to have to find the loop and you kind of give it a tug and you can see that this is the loop that then has to come out. Once you undo one row like this, pulling it backwards, then you can just pull on it the way you did the first one. So each end will be slightly different on how you're taking them apart. Something that I had um, not expected when I did my first waste yarn. So that is why I like to tell you. So I have my two tubes. They are very long as you can tell. I have seamed up the tops. I've left the bottom live because my tubes may not be the same length, even though I did count, and I know for sure these ones aren't because I wanted to show you, but if you were doing like a 300 tube blanket and they weren't quite the same length at the bottom, it's something to do with tension, I don't really know, but my tubes, they were all 300 rows, they did not match up. So it's handy to leave it open and live. What do we want to do for this join? I don't know what the fancy word for it is, it's basically like you slip stitch one side into the other, sort of like we did on the top, only this time we're using two different colors. So you don't need any yarn to join this. It's just like you're slip stitching back and forth, sort of like we did these joins. So first I just start with the top loops on one side. It doesn't really matter which side you pick. And then you're just going to find one loop on the other side and pull it through. And now because I have gray, I need to find a loop on the pink side and pull it through. And then the gray one and pull it through. And then the pink one, you know, back and forth, gray, pink, gray, pink. I like to look at the V. So the V that's in front of me here, you can see it kind of, it opens and goes around, right? So this V, I always think that I'm going into this V and when I'm looking at this one, I'm going in the center of the pink V. So when I'm thinking in my head, I go in, then I'm going under. And I'm not sure if that's really a special thing or not. That's just how I remember to pick the right loop. Because if you do get the wrong loop, you will notice when you look back that your line changes. And if you skip a stitch, you'll notice that as well. So try to keep them all lined up. And this is, you can see this is the 
the line that's going to be straight all the way across and these loops are being picked up. So I'm going in that one and then going slip stitch and then this one you can see this is the top loops that's the line that you're going to see so under this one pull it through i'm going i'm going to look here i it can be confusing if you get it a bit twisted so always look at that line that you want to keep straight so instead of looking at the loop that i'm picking up i'm really looking at the loop that i'm not picking up if that makes sense and of course, if you have 300 stitches on a tube, this takes a while, but it doesn't use extra yarn and it seems to be a strong join and it's kind of cute. So I think it's worth it. I, I knew I did this on purpose. I actually only got 17 rows of the pink and I had 20 rows of the gray. So my pink has run out. This is actually waste yarn, the gray and the white. I only wanted my project to be pink and gray. So if I was doing a tube blanket, now what I have to do, I've reached the end of my pink, I need to take a lifeline and find on the gray to make it match the same lengths so that they're across. The easiest way to do that, or I don't know if it's the easiest, the way I do that is a needle, another contrasting color so you wouldn't want to use gray, so we can see here the pink loops. If you follow the yarn, it goes up behind here and down and then behind here and up and behind and up. So this is this is the row I'm going to follow and behind and up and behind, right? So we want to pick from these loops. We just want to pick one loop and go in it. Then we're going to, it goes down here and up. We're not going to pick up this loop. We're going to leave it. We're just going to pick up the second one. And you have to go all the way across. This is a lifeline so that when you pull your waist yarn, you'll keep going and you'll pull this apart too until you get to your lifeline. And then you know that your tubes are the same. So you can follow this loop. It goes down and under. And when it comes back up, I'm not picking it. And it goes behind here. It comes down, so I'm going to pick that one up. And it goes under, and then it comes up, and it goes under. So that's the loop that I'm picking up. Okay, I've put my lifeline all the way around, and I actually put it through here because my white popped off. So now we can go here, and we can say this is the corner. So up here, this is the same corner that we want to keep. So if you had multiple two blankets, the way I did mine was I closed off all the tops, then I did this seam, and I kind of put a, a stitch marker in it. Then I start here, and I grab that seam, and I keep going across. And then I put a stitch marker in it, and I joined this seam, and I went across. So I didn't actually tie off my live ends until the very last one. But this, you're going to do the same as you had done on the top. So we know that this is our corner one. We're going to just... I have to turn it this way to do it. Pull it through. So that's the bottom one. And do the top one. And the bottom one and the top one all the way across, right? Just like you had done before. Now I'm back to here. I have this lifeline. Oh, I have too many blue here. That will be a little confusing for you, sorry. But this is the lifeline that's going across. This was my waste yarn. So now I need to take away the waste yarn and it is the that's how I started my tube, so it's the one that needs to be pulled out before it will come apart nicely. So I took all my waste yarn away, and then even this gray stuff, I had put that lifeline in, so when you do it now, it's stuck, right? That's what it means, and you can't go too far. So I pick up this live loop again that was from steaming here, and I just want to pick up now the gray again, and I'm going to go back and forth, up and down. Make sure you don't take the blue with you, because it'll be hard to pull it out. Um, this little tail, I need to cut that's way too long. Now that I have all that extra yarn, right? I only need a little bit to make a knot. And I have to always put my scissors right back up high on the shelf because little children. So, um, 
So I'm just going to keep my tail on the side. I'm going to make a knot with it later, but for now I'm just going to leave it. And I'm going to go out and I'm going to pick up all the loops that the blue is keeping safe. Thank you, blue, for keeping my stuff safe. I'm going to pick them up on my own now. I'm just going to go back and forth just like I had done before. The top and the bottom. The top and the bottom. Just the loop that the gray is just hanging out there. The blue one is keeping it from going too far. You'll pull the blue out once you seamed it. Make sure you get all of those loops. If you miss one, it will come undone. So this one is a bit tight because it's the last one and all the yarn is being pulled in other directions. So need to get in there. So this is where you need to use some of your, there's no tail here because of the way the loop went. So just grab some other, make sure it's the same color, it will be visible. So um, you just need enough to make a little knot. I'm going to pull it through here and tie on a knot and then it'll be stuck. But we'll pull it inside the tube so you don't want the knot on the outside, right? But you also can get rid of this blue stuff. Oh, it's pretty tight. I think we'll have to pull it out like this. It's a nice day to stay inside. Okay, so this is still live. This one still needs to be made a knot, otherwise it's going to come undone on you. I'm going to just pull it through. Pull it through. Make it nice and tight. I'm going to bring it inside so that it's hidden. Sometimes I just do it twice because I want to be able to tug on that one, right? And this one has to come inside because it's also ugly. And this one didn't make it, so we'll just pull that one in too. There we go. So now this one, you can use the tube to just, if you can find the string. Pull it. If you think the tail is too long, you can snip it too. I just like to pull it inside. So this would be the uh, top and bottom of your very huge blanket. You know, this blanket's going to cover a lot of people. 20 rows. <laughs> but I might just uh, seam this up and maybe it'll be a little child's neck warmer. Um, I don't think it's good for an adult, but I have a lot of kids. So that's what I'll do. I'll just join these ones together and tie it up. And that's what I'll have a random little neck warmer. <laughs> 